Board. This board. Approved $133,000. Approved $133,000. Tax abatement. Tax abatement. For luxury. For luxury. Residential lofts. Residential lofts. For a project that had been completed. For a project that had been completed. This board is not a democratic process. This board is not a democratic process. The people's representative. The people's representative. The Erie County Executive. The Erie County Executive. Who dissented to the project. Who dissented to the project. Who said it was a clear waste of taxpayer resources. Who said it was a clear waste of taxpayer resources. Had no capacity to stop. Had no capacity to stop. The county resources. The county resources. From being fleeced by this board. From being fleeced by this board. The ECIDA has been the ECIDA has been in operation for 42 years. In operation for 42 years. And Buffalo is still. And Buffalo is still one of the poorest cities. One of the poorest cities in the entire country. In the entire country. To borrow language from Mr. Fontana. To borrow language from Mr. Fontana. This experiment, this experiment has gone on for long enough. Has gone on for long enough. And it's time for immediate change. And it's time for immediate change. Occupy Buffalo. Occupy Buffalo. Through unanimous consensus. Through unanimous consensus. Is calling for an immediate suspension. Is calling for an immediate suspension. Of all tax abatements. Of all tax abatements. Awarded by this board. Awarded by this board. Until a town hall meeting. Until a town hall meeting. Can be held. Can be held. So the people's voice. So the people's voice. Can be heard. Can be heard. And how to stop. And how to stop. This crony corrupt. This crony corrupt. Process from continuing. Process from continuing. And for the for the constant. For the constant. Fleecing of county resources. Fleecing of county resources. This will not continue. This will not continue. We are sick and tired. We are sick and tired. Of resources go not being allocated. Of resources not being allocated. To projects that need it. To, to projects that need it. To communities that need it. To communities that need it. To the taxpayers that need it. To the taxpayers that need it. While while monies are being allocated. While monies are being allocated. To the wealthiest individuals. To the wealthiest individuals. In this county. In this county. First order of business is a financial report. Andrew? Thank you. On page 5 of your package, you'll see the monthly financial statements for the month of January. <coughs> Overall administrative fees earned by the IDA from its tax and funded projects exceeded the monthly budget by approximately 39% or $60,000. <coughs> this combined with some positive variances from the special project grants led to net income of $83,451, which exceeded budget by approximately $101,000. On page 6, you'll see the income statement for 2011. Overall, we exceeded, we ended the year with administrative fee revenue exceeding budget by 4%, or approximately $67,000. Affiliate management fees, which represents staff costs charged to the ECID's affiliated entities, exceeded budget by approximately $61,588, partly due to increased loan activity at RDC. Overall, the expenses were below budget. We did exceed budget in professional services, primarily due to the cost of hiring a recruitment firm to find candidates for two replacement positions. Uh, special project grants represent various development projects undertaken by the ECIDA in 2011. The positive $131,000 variance that you see there is a result of some older grant revenues in reserve due to a litigation matter being recognized and recovering from previous higher expenditures. My check! My Mike check! Mike. Where is Mr. Fontana? <laughs> Where is Mr. Fontana? <laughs> and the mayor? And the mayor? <laughs> are they? <laughs> are they? Two chicken? Two chicken? To approach us? To approach us? And listen to our voices? And, and listen, listen to, to our, our voices. voices? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments about the financial statements? Uh, Receive and file. Uh, the 2012 closing schedule. Uh, the closing schedule is attached on page 7. You'll see there are three projects, really two projects. The two components of the Lafayette Hotel restoration project and the uh, uh, project on Main Street for Valadomo. Total closed in the month was $48,500,000. Can we move right on to the loan and backlog report? Sure. Thank you. Uh, the loan status report is on page 8. You'll see that no loans were approved or closed in the month. Uh, however, uh, the 
loans in process that are being considered uh, for are ready for closing is a million nine hundred thousand, consisting of five projects. In addition, there is an additional almost ten projects in the pipeline uh, to be considered. At this time, I'd like to take a brief moment. Uh, the RDC board and the ECID board is the same. To introduce Jerry Manhart, who is our new loan manager. And Jerry, if you could say a few words about yourself. So oh, hi, we're for working work with everybody today or in the future. Well, I've been banking about 24 years. It's been about the last 16 or 17 of that in, in various capacities from collections to underwriting to business development. And also in the most recent um, stint was with the, uh, the credit, some credit unions in the area. So I do have some credit union experience and understand you know, the need to get the money out to the people as well. So I do look forward to working with everybody. And um, if I can be of assistance, uh, I please call me and look forward to helping anybody out. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Jerry. The last page is page nine, which is just a report that shows the backlog of projects that are unclosed and what the running 12-month closing rate has been. In column two, the backlog is $208 million of projects. And in column three, the running rate for the last 12 months of closing is $112 million. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Yes. Oh, I have a question with regard to the capsule in Milwaukee. Is that basically the reopening of the bar that just closed when Rocco started the project? That is uh, the bar uh, and the uh, uh, other facilities. John, I can't remember if, uh, what else is involved. Well, there was, there was the building as a new project, the first three floors, uh, kind of a basement based on the ground floor. Uh, the first floor and the second floor, there will be a couple of restaurants in there. Again, uh, this floor is somewhat of a writing center, but we will have uh, jewelers in there, uh, bakery facilities in there, uh, the golf club there. Space was is going to be a restaurant, but then he has some other uh, commercial activity on the first ground floor and on the third floor. Well, I'm to get, what, what is this five hundred thousand dollars specifically for? Is it for the other parts of the building, or is it particularly <coughs> for, for, the it's, it's for the renovation of the first three floors? So it's more than just the bar. Yes. No, and, and it's only a piece of the entire correct, correct. project. Well, that's, yeah. 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 And then the, the loan itself is. Is for uh, actually it's going to Earl Petrie, who is the, the, uh, the applicant, and that will be going to not only the uh, restaurant area, but they're also doing a uh, <coughs> brewery operation as well. So. Further questions, comments? Quick point uh, just on, on behalf of the renovation uh, <coughs> there, I toured it last month and I was not, not too sure it's spectacular. They're really recreating all the old cornices and doing a great job within that building. You can really bring it up historically correct. And they're doing everything on site, so there's still traffic and motion down from both those elevators. Great. Other questions? Emma? Receive and file. <coughs> uh, the inducement revolution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Blew, blew by that. Uh, you're going to. Yeah, I can, I can cover the government's committee report on the Republic Authority Law. Uh, all local and state boards are required to do an annual performance review. Uh, that performance review was undertaken by all the members. Um, um, it was within a survey that by the staff that the government committee met um, and reviewed the results. And um, the, the purpose of the, of the survey is to remind members of their, of their duties <coughs> an opportunity to review policies of the, the, the uh, agency and, and identify any areas of improvement. Uh, the survey indicated no areas of concern, uh, but the governance committee did ask that the staff, uh, com this is only the second year of the survey, compare trends between 2010 and 2011 um, and note um, a, a trend on each of the individual areas reviewed um, and report back to the governance committee if there are any any areas that the staff could identify um, that could be areas of improvement or trends in that manner. And the report will be filed with the ADL as required. Thank you.
Other questions? Okay, receive and file. Now the inducement resolution. Great. Good morning. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to uh, page 11 of your uh, word packages uh, for the uh, Buffalo RMH Operating LLC project. This project is eligible uh, both under state law as well as the agency's uniform tax exemption policy, which highlights that renovation of existing hotels and motels are eligible projects. The hotel is uh, <coughs> undertaking an extreme makeover since the last one was done in 2002. Uh, it was constructed in the early 70s and operated as a Sheraton, but since 99 has been operated by the Millennium Group. Uh, everything is getting upgraded uh, to, to accommodate their guests, 87% uh, of which uh, come in from outside Erie County. Uh, this includes the guest rooms, common areas, banquet facility, meeting rooms, uh, restaurant uh, areas. Our involvement is limited to uh, a sales tax savings only. Uh, we have a strong letter of support for this project from Supervisor Mary, and um, the uh, public hearing transcript is uh, attached to your records, uh, and there was testimony given at that public hearing. We have uh, um, representatives from the company here in case there are any specific questions on, on the project. Thank you. I have a number of questions. Uh, it appears uh, that there are no new hotel rooms that are being created as a result of this project. That's correct. Uh, 90 rooms will be upgraded at the club level, 210 will be upgraded to the general. Uh, what, what is the club level? The club level would be Keep going. You've got a number of questions. Uh, Just keep I, going. I, I do have a number of questions. Uh, <coughs> so even though there's, there seemed to be competing language in some of the ECIDA documents that noted either it was a renovation or an expansion, so there will actually be no expansion. Correct. It's not expansion. Uh, does the project doc, uh, uh, contemplate a higher occupancy rate going forward? Actually, we anticipate occupancy will dip slightly because of the infusion of this division. We anticipate that the rate will be an increase rate. I had, it was recently reported by uh, Jim Fink of Business First or somewhere that the uh, occupancy rate in 2011 was 82%, uh, which is far higher than the occupancy rate of competitive hotels in the area. As you may know, in 2011, when I was here county controller, my office did an audit of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and one of the things that we looked at was the occupancy rate of, of competing hotels. It turns out that the average occupancy rate in your county 2010 was 64%, so I congratulate you. There's something or other taking a higher occupancy rate than most other hotels. Uh, it was 66 and 68% in 2006 and, and 2007, but of course there was a dip as a result of the economic decline in 2008. Uh, so I, I guess one of the questions I, I had was in, really in regards to the room rate. If you're not going to be increasing revenue, which it appears the project is asking for, is increase. the hope is that you'll increase revenue by $2 million. Uh, you're going to be charging a much higher room rate, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, were questions brought up by the ECID as to the actual amount of the room rates? Were any questions brought up at all? No. Well, I think we have that information on the on the room rates. I thought that appeared uh, in the uh, statement from the from the owners in the, the public hearing. Uh, well, actually, I researched the room rates last night. Um, we do. We do have a special for Canadian guests. Yes, Your lowest room rate was $100 a night, and I think it was about 139 for non-Canadians that are required to have ID. Right. So. However, if that's the rooms that we sell through that channel, the majority of the channels that we sell are, are trading in now are either through Priceline and Hotwire or through airline contracts. And those rates typically trade at about 40 to $50. If it was our hope and intent that with this renovation, we would be reduced our reliance <coughs> on that type of business the loss in occupancy and trade it up to higher rate of business around that hundred dollar price point. We talk about the occupancy metric being higher than the local market, which is true it is, but our average rate is about thirty dollars less than our competitive set within the marketplace. We look we, we parity in the rate as we move the renovation. 
one of the questions I had had less to do with analysis of from as presented by the representatives of the Lending Hotel, but uh, if the occupancy goes up, which it's not, the occupancy actually is going to go down. So we're not talking about bringing more people into to Buffalo or Erie County. Uh, what we're talking about is giving them an opportunity to generate increased revenue for changing into facilities. Uh, and I don't blame the Millennium Hotel for trying to do that. <laughs> I'm sure it's smart. Uh, there, in, the, in the documents, it talked about a net new list of employees in the hotel of 23, though <coughs> Grant noted in the hearing uh, that commenced uh, last week that they actually laid off three benefits individuals and approximately 20 people in the last five to 10 years. Is that more as a result of an economic downturn? That's a result of the occupancy that we're trading at. Um, combined with the rate that we receive, we're providing less service right now. With the increased renovation, with, with the uh, uh, rooms that we're going to be trading with, um, we plan on having concierge services. We plan on having expanded f and offerings. Things that we've had to curtail as our rate has been raised, and we've struggled to achieve and maintain profitability. Our profitability in 2011 was actually less than what it was in 2001. Our business model has gone backwards. Our biggest labor, our biggest expense was labor. We've had to trim labor in response to the downturn. What type of labor did you trim? We <laughs> trimmed everything from management <coughs> positions to laundry, housekeeping, uh, front desk services, van drivers, food service. Did you guys take a pay cut? And, and, and in the end, did, uh, we were talking about the hopeful restoration of approximately 23 positions. Mm -hmm. What primary positions were those? Another question I had was not directed to uh, folks associated with the Millennium Hotel, but was the implant model that showed a cost to taxpayers of two hundred seventy-five thousand and a benefit of six million one hundred eighty-two thousand. I'm not exactly certain that that benefit of six million one hundred eighty-two thousand is truly going to add up. Uh, it includes twenty-three jobs that are expected to be hired, hopefully to be hired without, of course, any clawback provisions. Uh, hence the amount of employment, sales tax, and property tax is suspect. Uh, talks about 1.8 million, almost 1.9 million increase from stores, entertainment, transportation, accountants, doctors, and attorneys. Based on the description from the Millennium Hotel representatives, I find it highly suspect that we're going to actually create 1.8 million or 1.9 million dollars of additional economic benefit in the community from this, from this uh, renovation, not expansion. Talks about 27 equipment supply jobs for one year of 3.6 million dollars, but those aren't necessarily tied to Erie County. How could we say that we're going to have 3.6 million, 3.7 million dollars of economic uh, growth in Erie County when many of those benefits will actually occur elsewhere from purchasing of equipment that may not necessarily come from an Erie County company? So how can we add 3.7 million dollars as a benefit when we have no proof that that's actually going to benefit? business or the community. Can somebody from ECIB answer that question? Mr. Polenkars, I'm not the expert on implant. Uh, I think some of the people on the staff that have been trained at it. Uh, this is a national model that was used in a number of economic development areas. I think Mr. Tobin and yourself have raised these questions. In fact, I scheduled a meeting for Mr. Tobin with uh, uh, Kent Gardner from CGR in Rochester who has developed a an alternative, a very similar rebased model of implant uh, with uh, Mr. Toby sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, you are right uh, in the sense that this uh, does not appear to lock and guarantee these jobs in Erie County uh, as far as the 3.6 or the 1.8. This model <coughs> is based on a regional area, geographic area around the county, and this is the same model they use around the country. This is what they feel comfortable with. This is the likely effect. Is it possible that all the hotel beds and whatever else will come from somewhere else? That's possible. So I think just to reduce this down to bare minimum, if you take the 275 of applicant benefit and you look at the 23 jobs uh, and the new payroll of 500,000 or 600,000, you're talking about an increase, if nothing else happens, of 600,000 <coughs> payroll over the next uh, five to 10 years each year versus a one-time cost of $275,000. Uh, I think, you know, just if my I personal <coughs> view of this, and I'm pretty skeptical of models myself, and, and all models in the world. Uh, so, but, but 
I don't necessarily believe that the benefits here are 20 to 1, but if you cut it in half, you get 10 to 1 or whatever. And, and another way to look at it is if they're successful in, in increasing the revenues from, from room rentals by $2 million a year, uh, that'll generate sales tax and uh, what the occupancy, what is the uh, hotel bed tax. Well, certainly that's the question I have. And significant and, and none, amount. Of the, none of the documents have been provided by the ECIDA. What I really would like to know, because it has a direct correlation in Erie County, is what is the projected growth in the hotel and motel occupancy bed tax? We're talking about a alleged $1.8 million in all these other ancillary areas, almost $3.7 million of equipment supply jobs, which are... are speculative at best, but what could have been documented and was not documented is if the Millennium Hotel has its growth and if it projects after it's done it with its renovation, it knows what its actual or its expected revenues are going to be. I would like to know what the increase or decrease that would have had on the motel and occupancy tax for Erie County because that's a direct correlation, the benefit that the county would then therefore mm -hmm. see. And when we're talking about sales tax, uh, uh, breaks. Sales tax breaks not only benefit the entity, but they hurt not only New York State because they get the first 4% of sales tax, but the remaining 4.75% of sales tax does not go solely to Erie County. We actually share uh, approximately 46% of that. So in the end, we're hurting every other municipality in the community. Uh, what I would have liked the DCIDA to show is what they believe the true value of this project is. I'm not I, I think you agree yourself that this, this 20 to 1 ratio is probably Seems too good to be true. Okay. What I would have liked to have seen is actual, when we're doing these types of analysis, what is the true impact of this by looking at the things that we can actually determine, such as what would be the impact on the hotel bed tax. I don't know if there's actually going to be an increase or there's going to be a de decrease, because while you're talking about increased rates, you're also talking about a decrease in your occupancy. So will it be a wash? Will it not? Well, I don't know if you can answer those questions. If you want to answer those questions, is that proprietary information or not? Well, isn't, isn't, isn't your goal to increase your revenues by $2 million a year? Increase your revenue a year is 5%. And the, the, you're saying the bed tax is 5%? Yes, it's 5%. 5% of $2 million a year is $100,000 a year in increased uh, bed tax. Plus, or the, the room rates are also subject to the sales tax, are they not? So that's eight and a half, that's another 170,000 a year. Not a critique of the Millennium Hotel, it's a critique of the analysis that's prepared by the ECI. Uh, I can't say I agree with the implant model, and more importantly, I don't believe that we should provide the taxpayer subsidies to companies that generally do not improve the economy of Erie County. Uh, I hope that they're, they're successful in this project going forward, but I'd rather use public resources uh, for appropriate me mechanisms rather than to give an economic competitive advantage over their competitors. While the Millennium Hotel is an old hotel, it actually has probably the most uh, competitive advantage of any hotel in the area, and it's on the doorstep of the Gallery Mall. As I noted, most of their uh, uh, individuals that are actually their clients are actually from Canada, and they When it was built, it was the only hotel in that area, and I remember that because uh, my grandparents lived in Lancaster, and we get off on Weldon Avenue, and it pretty much was the only thing there, that and the Leonard Post, and it was the old Sheridan. They got lucky. They got lucky because you always hear about real estate, location, location, location. Well, they got lucky because Chairman decided to the Gallery Mall right next to their location, which benefited the Millennium in the long run. Uh, during the past five to ten years, there have been many new hotels built in the corridor and approximately around the Gallery Mall. Some of those, which of course I'm sure they're trying to compete with now by creating a more club level or, or suite level type environment. Um, now we're being asked to provide additional advantage over its newer competitors by subsidizing this renovation. Uh, considering the occupancy rate for the hotel is already quite high, and they're admitting it actually will go down, uh, the only advantage of this project is it greatly increases the, the per room rate, and we've said it will. We'll have to wait and see if that's possible. While I'm all for competition, I believe the marketplace is the best place for that competition, and not for government to be handing out uh, subsidies to local and service-related uh, entities. I know there's been a long history of the ECI doing these projects, and that the current policy allows for it. However, I believe the time has come to revisit that policy. 
before on this question, I will vote no. And I request that the policy committee recommend a moratorium on retail and local service projects. And during the moratorium, a new policy be developed and recommended for adoption by the board beginning regarding these types of hotel and retail projects. It's not clear you know, how long my tenure as chairman will continue. Uh, you know, certainly, as, as, as long as it continues my present role, I will so direct the policy committee to do that. Uh, I think we have some issues about who, who will be on the policy committee. We've been talking to Mr. Toby about that. Uh, I've we, we've, we've dealt a <laughs> considerable extent uh, over the years with trying to maintain a consistent policy among all the IDAs within the county, and it's, it's been a challenge. Uh, a lot of us share your frustrations about various aspects of the policy uh, as it affects all of the all of the projects. Uh, I think I think you've recognized, and, and it's true that this project is consistent with the uniform policy that we tried to adopt among all the IDAs within the county. Uh, many elements of that policy are, are ripe for review, I believe. Uh, Jim, question. Yes, Chair, uh, I have some questions on the 22 jobs that uh, this project is supposed to be going to, to recreate. Um, this project is not a union hotel, so it doesn't pay union rate $60,000. That's not a union hotel. Union hotel. Mm -hmm. um, what is the average salary of these 22 jobs? I mean, I get, uh, I get the 22 jobs divided by uh, $557,558. Other question down there? Thank you. It was uh, referring to, uh, to the equipment of 3.25 million. Did any um, idea where the equipment will be on the trip at this point? No. I guess mostly just be bedding and furniture and such. Bedding, furniture, and bedding. Where do you see the equipment? Is there another question across the table? Oh, very much. Just when we have line items that are, are specific about HVAC systems and then cooling towers and even lighting, uh, I'd like to see if they've done research on incentives that are currently available and you can pay up to 50% of high efficiency equipment. So when I see stuff like that, what I don't want, I don't know if it was analyzed, uh, but you can get local uh, utilities and nicer to provide the incentives. I just wanted to, I want to see that. And specifically, and that's another another happy issue for the policy committee going forward, is to what extent do we try to uh, include clawbacks and, and try to enforce the clawbacks. I think the biggest penalty is if, if they don't increase their revenues, they've wasted their money. And they've got a lot more money into this than we do. Who's the guy on this, the committee or this board? This what? This project? this project? Oh, this, uh, this project work. is the board. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how hard is it to just say, look, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. 
and, and here's your inducement, here's your incentive. If you don't do it, what's the penalty? Well, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very easy to say the first part of that question. I mean, if, if they don't spend the money that they're saying that they're going to spend, then they don't get the inducement. I mean, then there's, there's no sales tax savings. If they don't achieve the results that they propose, I mean, you've got a lot of questions in dealing with that. That's one of the things we've struggled with on the policy committee is how do you actually write it down? Um, you know, what if they achieve a million and a half of increased revenues instead of two million? Do we do it proportionately? Uh, what if they achieve the increased revenues and you get the incremental sales tax and bed tax, but they don't create that many jobs? What if they in, what if they add the 23 jobs, but they don't increase the bed tax? Um, I mean, you can you can put down pretty much anything you can put down, but it gets to be pretty difficult to actually say, all right, this should this should be the deal. Um, we struggle with it. the idea of clawbacks is is not new. It's not a bad idea. Um, the, the devil is in the details. You know, I understand that that's not a new concept, but I guess what I have difficulty is, I mean, what's so hard about implementing it? That, that, uh, I mean, if you have confidence in this project, you, would, you would, should have no problem with guaranteeing that, that, that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. This is a worldwide. Well, I think it, yeah, I think you have. I think they you own, have two. They own hotels worldwide. You have two elements of it. You've got. Jobs that are not they're saying what they're going to do is spend the five million dollars. Competition you know, happens in the streets. How much confidence they have that they're going to increase the revenues by two million is another one. I guess the other exception I would have to take to your your premise is so far every other hotel in in Erie County that has undertaken and renovations has gotten these benefits. So to say that, excuse me, <coughs> so to say that they're competing with people who have not gotten the benefits would be inaccurate. It's, it's, it's consistently been the policy of all the IDAs to grant sales tax benefits for a renovation. And I mean, how, many, how many of those have been I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but they come in here pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah Phil, yeah. Um, just a couple questions. What was the percentage again <coughs> of out of towners slash Canadians that occupy the hotel? I think that's, it was in that's the transcript. That's just because Canadian, that's their primary market, so I think. But, uh, specifically, I think it's 7, 7%. Remaining percentage being uh, local Canadians that are in this place we're going to stay Um. First of all, I commend the board for having this discussion. I think it's an important discussion. And um, I appreciate the comments by County Executive Paul McCars. I think this is a very important discussion. But um, I have a couple questions, too, as I think it's important to get both sides of the story on here. The capital expenditures of $5.5 million, do you get a tax deduction from that, for that? No. Correct? All right. There was, in the transcript, there was... There was um, testimony by somebody that said that they're getting a tax deduction. And I think it's important for the record that when you make a capital improvement to a business, you don't get a tax deduction for that. So as Mr. Ackerman stated, this money that the business is putting into this renovation is at risk completely, and they're not getting a tax benefit for that money. The second important point, I think, which has been discussed and brought up is that this is a one-time sales tax savings. And given the projections of increased sales that they're hoping to achieve, there's a very logical explanation of how they want to achieve that. The payback could be one year. The ratio of investment to one-time abatement is 20 to 1, approximately. So I, I look at this, again, I went through this in very you know, extreme detail before this meeting, again, because I think that a lot of these projects, they're not black and white. There's a lot of gray, as Mr. Ackman just described. And I think in this particular project, this is a very good payback for the community because we end up getting a much improved hotel. And um, just reading in the Buffalo News yesterday how the NFPA <coughs> wants to spend $400 million to um, do improvements to the airport because they expect the number of tra uh, passengers traveling to the airport to go from about five and a half million to eight million passengers over the next 15 years. Um, 
And also, given the fact that we've lost 10 percent of our population, our economy is stagnant, I think that we should be doing everything we can to help the local businesses. And I think this is a great example of an amount invested that's very, very small in proportion to the benefit potentially that we get back as a community. Also, we have gone and uh, we have allowed this for other hotels. The policy committee, though, very firmly did not allow any type of incentive for new hotels. We didn't meet and discuss this in the last four years. And um, many hotels have been built since then. So that was a good decision by the policy committee then, I think. So I, um, I looked at it from an investment standpoint and a return to the community. And I think from that standpoint, it's a good project. <coughs> That ain't right. It's been pretty right. thoroughly discussed. Barry, would you care to move yeah, just, this project? Just your attention to what I don't pay attention to what it is. <clears throat> and this project for town is a very good project. Um, until there's some kind of change in other communities, we have various ideas throughout the entire county. We have hidden centers for pizzerias and shoe stores and various other new, new constructs. If we don't change the policy for the other communities, our community will no longer be competitive with other communities. Like with Millennial Community and Emerson and Clarence, where they're getting in a big way. We have to be consistent with our policy, and we need to change the policy at the county level. If we're going to change the policy, it affects Erie County, Philadelphia, and Conchaguaga, who don't have their own IDAs. This policy has been in effect. We have used it for other communities. Um, it's got a new bill. It's important that we continue to keep our community, our community strong and help them out when we can. But we have to do it across the county equally. And until we do that, these kind of projects need to stay. Uh, would you care to move approval? Yes, I would. Okay, I'll second it. Is there uh, <coughs> further discussion or question? I think, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mary, I, I appreciate your comments on the project. I really do. I have been on this board now for over five years. We have been dealing with these same problems over and over and over again. Six IDAs in the county. Mary, we're competing against ourselves when we're the county folks. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. I've seen us move projects forward just because the state allows it to be done. Mm -hmm. Where is the benefit to the taxpayer? Where are the good paying jobs? Where is the real economic development in this project? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't see it. It's, not it's, there. it's just it's there for the hotel to make more money, which I, I'm not against them doing it, but do it with your own money. Not with my money, but not with yeah. the money. Worldwide business, I, they can find their own money. Um, your hands out of my pockets. I want to make one comment too, Mr. Hofer. Um, I, I think I think this board, I came into this board from the private sector and really tried to keep an open mind, struggle with a lot of these projects at times. So there's been projects that we've turned away. One of the things that I saw in the suburban IDAs is that they operate, um, I think they call them economic development zones or enhancement zones in some parts of the suburbs. Um, and they, that's a different set of rules, unfortunately. So we have had a countywide policy that we've tried to be consistent with. Sometimes that economic enhancement zone trumps our policy, and that's a state law, I believe. So that, that's a challenge going forward, obviously. And sometimes there's been some projects in the suburban IDAs that, um, you know, I, in my opinion, are not consistent with what we're trying to do here. We have had some projects here that have come before the Erie County IDA that um, fall in areas that are not covered under one of the suburban IDAs, and I'm thinking of one in Kenmore, and we, we turn them away. We haven't done them. So I think it's been a mixture of some of the things you're talking about, Mike, um, and we tried to do the right thing, but a lot of times there's, there's more gray area than black and white. Is there another, I guess? Yes, um, as a new member, um, I don't feel comfortable going on this right now, the information that you presented. But in this one, too, uh, for the county controller, which I've listened to for the past five years, when he had reservations, then for me, not having enough knowledge, I listened to that reservation. So I would recommend this be tabled to get me kind of remember my first meeting more information. Or however, if it's not tabled, then I have to go to number two. Second. Issue yes. pending mm -hmm. receipt of information with respect to what? Or in, in our direct conservation, see why reservation uh, in this project has been presented. Because I'm not, I can't make that judgment one way or another until I have more information. But enough reservation has been presented to give me caution in voting. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. when, when, all right, what, so that we can you know, move this forward eventually, what additional information should the staff be directed to uh, provide? Well, what clawbacks, not clawbacks. I've read the public comments, and I do listen to the public when they do comment. And I, I, and I respect that. I'm glad that that part of this uh, process is here, because there's people money. At the end of the day, there's people money we're spending. I've had enough reservation from my former controller to listen when he talks, because he has really steered Erie County in a good direction in the last five years. So him, his reservation of for me to have reservation going forward. Okay, we'll table it. Uh, put on your agenda for the next meeting. This is what democracy looks like! Uh, failing to make a decision <coughs> it looks like democracy. Anyway, value-centric. Thank you, yes. Um, value-centric is on page 31 of your uh, board packages. <coughs> Our first involvement uh, with the company dates back to uh, 2002 when they had about 11 people working there. Um, at the time, we assisted them with the construction of their uh, current 24,000 square foot facility. Uh, their products uh, help companies analyze supply chain data from sales and inventory to returns and in, uh, prescription information. Their uh, customers are typically manufacturers and, wholesale and wholesalers. 100% of the company's sales are outside of Erie County and 96% are outside of New York State. Uh, due to the company's past and projected growth, uh, they need to uh, update their IT infrastructure. Um, and in the near future, we'll be building out some uh, empty space in their uh, facility. The project is estimated at approximately $1.5 million and is expected to occur over uh, the next two years. I'd be happy to address any questions if anyone may have. Questions, comments? We have the uh, company CFO, uh, Scott Tierhar, uh, here with us today. They're, uh, they're technical jobs in nature. They're either um, technical customer support people or um, application developers. And what is the average salary? Um, it would be in the $60,000 range. <coughs> Further question, comment? Um, the same as if you don't create the jobs you say you're going to do. Uh, in, the, in the present uh, scheme, there is no penalty. That ain't right. That ain't right. right. Anyway, I'm in jail. Uh, I'll, I'll move it. Uh, Phil will second it. Uh, further question, comment? Uh, all in favor? Motion to Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Thank you. Senate resolution are we done to? Yes, the last item we have on, on the agenda is on page 47. Um, we did a, uh, a deal in 2008 for Benderson for the construction of a 130,000 square foot multi tenant building. And uh, this is a tenant approval to allow Derek Manufacturing to lease uh, uh, another 15,000 square feet at the facility. They're, they currently are leasing uh, 55,000 square feet at this facility, and they also have a plan in Chief Tawada. Second. All in favor? Oh, sorry, question, comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Thank you. Are they going to cover the media coverage? Just briefly, I'll do the media coverage and the management report we very short this month. Uh, page 49 of your uh, materials I'll call your attention to. Uh, as many of you know, we have a group of people in our staff who specialize in helping companies export from Erie County to uh, Canada, Europe, Asia, and Africa, South America. Uh, the Export-Import Bank of the United States has been a major partner of ours uh, for, since 1993. Uh, and in fact, we had Tom Cummings, who was in charge of all the branches, uh, service branches of uh, Exit Bank across the United States, uh, in for a 